Born and raised in Beirut, Sheila Smith learned that hospitality starts in the garden. After dining on handcrafted recipes fresh from the picking, guests settle back to converse among the flowers. She and husband Tim crafted their haven together, making modifications when Sheila was diagnosed with lupus. It's become her healing place that energizes and strengthens. I love the idea of someone taking a walk through your backyard. So my pathways are designed to almost feel like a brook going around or a little riverbed. And also, it, our house is uh, for the grandchildren. So much of what we do together is, is just for them. Hospitality is very important to us. Our growing up in the Middle East, uh, hospitality is... Very important. Very important. It's uh, part of the, the DNA of who you are as a family. We like to sit, you know, after a meal or sometimes we'll eat out here on this table. But just sit out in the backyard and you're watching the birds and the butterflies and just talking and visiting. And now with the chickens, we'll sit out here on the back porch and just watch the chickens play. It's entertainment for us, but we also enjoy the process of gardening. The stonework in the in the yard is a little bit each each year. It's not just all of a sudden you're going to get out and do all the stonework. Growing up in the Middle East, uh, the outside is part of the inside, and there's a flow to the traffic and the flow for your mind and visually, and it's restful and peaceful and it's welcoming. Sheila companions for height, texture, and color. And as leaves fade or go dormant, the latest star takes its place to divert attention. Since the tool shed commands a prominent view, they gave it charm along with its own cozy hideaway. It's fun to watch the children that come to visit or the grandchildren. Mm. They just explore and go around the pathways. And you'll see the little toddlers that get the biggest kick out of going on the circular pathway and then playing hide and go seek. When they find the butterflies and uh, snails or a caterpillar and of course then you get to teach them all about the whole process of the caterpillar and the butterfly. Beyond the patio and just steps from the kitchen, raised beds flourish with flowers and food. They went for stone after wooden ones collapsed after years in Texas weather. The raised beds are a, a an opportunity for me to to bring back those childhood memories of sitting in a courtyard in, in Lebanon. Sitting on the raised beds is also another sitting area. I have um, a loop, lupus, which is an autoimmune disorder, and sometimes I struggle uh, skeletal-wise in bending over in the garden and, and doing the, the hard work. And so it's an easy way for me to sit on the edge and reach over and sit and peacefully enjoy my garden and it not be a matter of work all the time, but just a matter of being in the garden and walk around the garden. To protect new seedlings from their two rescued cats, Sheila lays over leftover chicken wire. Once the plants are grown, the cats leave them alone and she removes the shield. There's two things that you'll, you'll see in the raised beds. One is eggshells that I put around the Swiss chard, the greens, and broccoli and so forth. If you put those sharp, jagged egg, edges of the eggshell up and surround each plant with it, the snails can't crawl over that space. I feel like one of the easiest ways to make your house a home is to get your, uh, to get your uh, uh, herb garden established. So whenever I move somewhere, the first thing I do is if, if I can't plant an herb in the ground, I'm gonna do it in a pot. And uh, growing up in Lebanon, your basic herbs are parsley and mint, spearmint, and uh, oregano and thyme. The uh, basic recipe for tabbouleh is parsley and mint, uh, burhul, which is cracked wheat. But I use uh, uh, quinoa because uh, I can't, I'm gluten-free, celiac disease is part of lupus, so I've learned to substitute in, and so I use um, uh, quinoa, and tomato, and green onion. Salt, pepper, lemon juice, olive oil, that's it. Part of hospitality is sharing uh, of your bounty. 
with others and it's so easy to do with gardening. You can get cuttings, for example, of my coleus. I put them in the ground early as soon as it gets warm weather. You keep cutting the tops off the coleus and then you don't have that leggy, funny looking coleus. It gets nice and bushy. And when I cut off the top, I bring it inside and stick it in water. Within a week, I've got another coleus plant. And you keep go doing that all summer long and coleus will last till your first freeze. The real story to having a healthy, productive garden is dirt, having healthy dirt. And if you'll put forth the, the work in feeding your soil in, in October and November, using your own homegrown compost, and then doing that every year, and then mulch. That is the key, especially in Texas. They make theirs in jumbo-sized trash barrels that keep out animals. All I did was drill holes in the top, the sides, and the bottom. Um, we take our kitchen waste, yard waste, shredded paper, and just dump it in. It takes about three months to fully work. One advantage is that uh, you know, when it rains, the water drips through there, and in the summertime in Texas, you've got to keep your compost wet. Also, my wife can come out here. She can roll these on the side, just roll them down the hill a little bit, five, ten feet and then bring it back and you've mixed up the compost. I wanted the chickens for the chicken poop, actually, for the and composting the and the eggs. We read that having the stone around the chicken coop uh, protects from uh, critters getting in underneath. I wanted the chicken coop to be a part of all of the garden, to, to flow together. We started looking down at the ReStore, the Habitat for Humanity ReStore, and we use a lot of materials from there. The windows are from there. We bought some boards from there. Some of the hardware too. Yeah, some of the hardware. I wanted to save the chicken poop for my compost. So he took a pitchfork and uh, put this very fine screen and left the tongs uh, sticking out like that. So I can reach back into the back of the chicken poop and sift it out. And then he did a, got a, kitty litter scoop and added a handle to it and put the screen on it too. And so I can really reach back into the corners and sift it out and the sand falls through and uh, then I still keep my chicken poop and add it to the compost pile. The grandchildren love to uh, help in the garden. They take uh, great pride in it uh, and uh, they're part of it. Family, friends, feelings and flowers are the heart of their garden. Gardens are visual stimulus, and I want the stimulus to be a, a gift to me, to be peaceful and to be healing. If I'm not feeling well physically, if I can make it out onto my back porch and sit and, and just look out to nature and see butterflies and see flowers blooming, it's, it's healing to my soul. And if it's healing to me, it's gonna be healing to someone else.